Opening up your chakras to aid in manifestation on today's episode of the Magister Sanctum. Greetings, everyone. I'm Oblaron, the Lord of Love and the Magister of the Cube. Today, we're going to be going over how to open up your chakras to aid in manifestation. Now, this is a very powerful technique if you haven't done it already. And I would have to say it needs to be used responsibly and it needs to be used with, with great care. When you use spiritual gifts and when you use your spiritual powers, it should always be in service to others. Whenever we use these gifts from the Creator, from the Most High, on ourselves to amplify what we want, it can it could lead to less than beneficial consequences. There, there's a lot of spiritual channels out there. There's a lot of law of attraction channels out there that just say, hey, you know, manifest abundance, manifest all this kind of stuff. But really, again, we may be able to manifest it, but it may not be in the ways that we want, or it may not be in the ways that we anticipated, you know, that manifestation to occur, but, you know, that the universe gave us what we asked for. It's, it's a lot like, it's a lot like comparing it to like a genie in a bottle. And again, um, use this technique with great caution and a word of advice is to always use it in service to others. Use your spiritual gifts to pay it forward rather than, you know, to, to pay yourself. I've been doing this for about probably 15 years now. And I would say if any of you have seen, uh, let's say, Jim Carrey when, when he talked about his awakening, that is that that kind of describes it a lot, how how he was just in this other place for a long time and he can never figure out how to get back to it. I think that's very accurate because the same thing happened to me. Um, and my my sort of awakening at lasted for for a couple of years. I mean I was I was somewhere else for a while, okay and it took me a long time to be able to come back to earth and to also be able to function in uh, on this plane of existence too. So again, opening your chakras is not necessarily this, this answer to all of your, your life's problems because when you do open them, there, there's a whole new set of problems too. You know, we, we still have to be grounded on this plane of existence. We still have to, to function as, as people in society as well and not be so lost in the clouds all the time. So again, if you can, if you can master both of those, um, the 3D and the 5D, as a lot of people would say it, then yeah, you're going to be in a, in a very good position. Okay, so let's get into the state of the brainwaves. The reason why we want to be able to get into these different types of states is because it helps to amplify our intention and it helps to amplify our prayers and it helps to add potency to what we're trying to do when we are in these altered states. Because when you go into the altered states, you are connecting to something greater. And that connection is what helps to, let's say, put your spiritual dial on 11, so to speak. And that's how we are able to be heard and that's how we can manifest in a, in a quicker manner. When we go through our daily lives, we are in primarily a beta state. And that is the brain functions that we use for, for normal day-to-day -day activities. Driving, grocery shopping, talking to other people, whatever. That's, that's the beta state. When we are asleep, deep sleep, that's when we go into the delta state. And when we, when we begin to go into a light trance, that's when we, that's when we go into alpha state. Um, it could be... You know, I, I, a lot of Reiki practitioners kind of go into alpha state when, when they're practicing Reiki. So it's kind of like a light trance where you're doing lay on hands work, you know, th th those types of things. Um, I guess it, it can also be any time when you're in the zone. So like 
you know, if you're a musician and you play a musical instrument, that's kind of going into an alpha state a little bit because you're just in the zone and you're not really focusing on anything else around you. Now, the next state, which brings you into being able to visualize and to manifest is the theta state. And it's in this state that our, our intentions are amplified. We have a greater connection to the etheric planes. We have a greater connection to all that is. And it's right before, it's right before we, we kind of go to sleep, but we're still awake. It's, it's, that, it's that in between the dream world and, and in between you know the, the waking world. When you go into theta state, you'll probably notice your eyes begin to flutter a little bit. Um, you'll also notice that that it's really easy to visualize stuff again because you're you're almost in a dream state. You're you're in a deep trance at this point. That that's usually the 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 key to say okay we're in theta state. Now let's begin to open up our chakras. Let's begin to reach out. Now there's one last state which is the gamma state, and that is a state which a lot of Tibetan monks and Indian gurus are able to maintain on, on a daily basis. So it's, it's when you're pretty much connected to all that is and the most high all the time. And that's, that's pretty much the goal of what we're doing when we try to open up our chakras. So we go into the theta state to be able to come out of it and experience life in a gamma state. And again, the reason why manifestation is so important to, to use in service to others is because it helps us to connect with a greater purpose. It helps us to, to connect to the Creator, to connect to the Most High, to connect to God. Now, a lot of people have different methods and, and, and ways to do this. I'm sharing with you my personal way. Um, it's, it's combined of a couple of different techniques and it's, it's been what I found to, to be very useful. So the first thing to do is to be mindful of your breathing. And a lot of people, they, they use different mantras, they use different chants to help regulate their breathing. I read of a technique called elemental breathing, which I, I find very useful in my own practice. It's where you repeat the mantra, earth, air, fire, water. And what, what you do is you breathe in, and you say in your mind, earth, air, fire, water. You hold your breath, and you say, earth, air, fire, water, in your mind. You exhale, say, earth, air, fire, water. And on the exhale, you hold that exhale and say, earth, air, fire, water. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And it gets our breathing in a very cyclical and a very rhythmic pattern. And it's, it's going into that pattern, which helps to unlock more of a meditative state. You can use any other mantra or chant that you want, um, anything that you're comfortable with, but just make sure it's not too long because you know you gotta you gotta get a cycle of breathing going on. So, again, inhale, hold, exhale, hold, repeating that mantra with every step of the way. And when you find that you're in more of a relaxed state, then you want to close your eyes and begin to focus on the beating of your heart. You want to begin to focus on your heart, the beating of your heart with your eyes closed. And just, just feel the rhythm, feel, feel the pulsing of your heart. And when you feel it begin to amplify around you and amplify in the space around you too, imagine a tree trunk growing around your body. Now this is what I call the tree of Yggdrasil. And the heart chakra makes up the trunk of the tree of Yggdrasil. With every beating of your heart, you notice that this tree trunk is beginning to solidify a little bit more, and your heart chakra is beginning to open more. Remember, everything starts with the heart. So, as you are, as you are imagining this, also begin to start to imagine roots growing out from the bottom of your heart chakra, and it's starting to go down and it's beginning to wrap around your solar plexus chakra, your sacral chakra, and your root chakra. So it's going down these these tendrils of roots that are going down into the ground, okay? Imagine those roots 
going down even further, down into the core of the earth, or it goes past the crust, it goes past the mantle, down into the core. And these roots are pulsating, they're alive. And when it reaches the core, imagine beginning to draw up energy from the core of the planet. So just as the roots of a tree in real life suck up the water from the ground that they're in, your spiritual roots are beginning to suck up the energy of the planet, okay? You're beginning to drink from the energy of the planet. And the energy of the planet is feeding these roots. It's making your roots brighter. It's making them stronger. And it is coming back up from the core and it's going back into you. First through your root chakra, okay? Now, as as the energy of the core of the earth hits your root chakra, it begins to open up that chakra. It begins to, you know, some people use a lotus blossom as, as a reference. Let's say a spinning lotus blossom that, that slowly begins to open up. You can imagine that. You can imagine, you know, whatever you want. Just something to, to, to help you visualize that chakra opening it up. Um, or that chakra opening up. And... The color of the root chakra is red. We're going to go in the order of the rainbow. If anyone knows Roy G. Biv, that's also the color of your chakras. So it's it's opening up your root chakra, which is red, and it's drawing the energy, it's drinking of the energy from the core of the earth. Now, as it fills up your root chakra, it now goes to your sacral chakra, which is the color orange. And that begins to open it up. Notice the roots feeding that chakra. Uh, notice it beginning to, to open up and become brighter as well. After the root, or after your sacral chakra, then you notice it going to your solar plexus chakra. And it begins to open that up as well. It's the color yellow. And it's, your, it's also your stomach chakra as well. And again, the roots feed the chakra. You're, you're drawing in all the energy that you can from the core of the earth to open up your chakras. Next, it goes to your heart chakra. Now, the heart chakra is already surrounded by the tree trunk of Yggdrasil. And the roots are starting to feed the tree trunk. Okay, the trunk is becoming brighter. It's 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 opening up your heart chakra, which is green, and and, and you notice and you notice the the energy from the core of the earth begin to fill that up as well. Now we're getting to our throat chakra, and at the throat chakra we notice branches beginning to come out. Those are the branches of the tree of Yggdrasil, and those branches are beginning to reach up into the sky. And the throat chakra is, is blue. And again, the roots from the core of the earth come up through your body, they feed the throat chakra and, and all the other chakras below it, and it pushes the branches out from your shoulders, stretching up into the sky. Next, it goes to your third eye chakra, which is indigo. And again, as it goes to your third eye chakra, it begins to power it up, it begins to open it up, and you notice the branches are reaching out into space. They're growing ever more complex. They're, they're, they're becoming even more illuminated with, with light, with energy from the earth, um, how, however you choose to visualize it. Then you go to your crown chakra, and the crown chakra is, is violet and what you notice is that the branches are reaching out so far that they're going to the edge of our universe, of our known universe. So we're going back, what is it, 13 billion years to the creation of our known universe. So that's, that's, um, that's pretty much the tree of Yggdrasil in a nutshell. Reach down into the earth. Use the roots to reach into the earth, draw power, have it power up the chakras, and then it goes into the branches, which branch out into all the way to the edge of the known universe. Okay. As we are, as we are experiencing this, go out even further, okay? Go out further with your tree. Go out further with your branches. You... 
you are you're past the known universe now. You're you're going into the multiverse now. You are starting to see that our universe is one of many. You are starting to see that life is is so much more complex and so much beautiful, so much more beautiful and so much more loving than what we can even imagine. So keep on branching out into that and explore it as much as possible. Go until you get to the edge of creation, okay? Everything in this physical world, everything in creation. And you notice that there is kind of this barrier, okay? Um, that's the barrier of cosmic law. That is that is the barrier that we are all guided by, that, that we all have to obey the laws of physics, the laws of harmony, proportion, ratio, um, you know, all these kinds of things. So those are the those are the laws. Now break through the cosmic laws till you get past it. And that is the essentially the seventh plane of existence. That is that is a plane of ultimate love. That is the plane of what we would call God. That's the plane of the Creator, the plane of the Most High. So imagine your branches reaching out and touching the the plane of all that is. And then, once you get there, begin to draw that energy down to you. So you're pulling up the energy from the earth into your heart chakra, and then you're also pulling the energy of the Most High down into your sh into your heart chakra by using the roots and the branches of the tree of Yggdrasil. So imagine drawing this energy down, and once you feel it, once you feel everything all that is, and you feel connected to all that is, when when your when your mind is is clear, when when you are in a state of complete bliss, that is when we begin to start our prayer. That is when we begin to start the command of manifestation. And again, only do it after when your mind is completely at bliss and when you are completely connected. So a good you know, topic to start off with is perhaps healing within the body. Um, if there's any elements that you have, if there is anything that you're going through, make the prayer to heal everything within yourself first to, to make it the highest and best. Now, you know, I'm not going to say exactly what words to use or, or that kind of stuff. This is going to be for you and your connection to the Most High. Once the prayers are made, again, offer gratitude, offer thanks to the Most High, um, feel grateful that we have the ability to do this and, and to be able to connect with this and then begin to draw everything back. Draw the branches back into your heart and draw the roots back into your heart as well. And slowly let everything unwind, let everything go back to how they were and that's when you open your eyes. Take a moment to feel that gratitude. Take a moment to remember that love that you felt when your branches were extended, when your roots were extended. The love for the Creator, the love for the Earth. And just breathe that in for a while. Breathe it in for a couple of minutes and, and just, just soak it up. And when you have that feeling in a waking state, that's when you get up and go about and carry on the rest of your day. Make a mental note of how you feel or even keep a journal. Um, a lot of this stuff, it's, it's really, it's really helpful to, to keep a record of it. So we know exactly what we asked for and we know, we know if, if we're actually seeing results from any of this. But again, the goal is to go into theta state so that we can ultimately live in gamma state. And I mean, if, if we could... If we can all learn how to live in gamma state, we would have world peace tomorrow. We, you know, no, no one would go hungry. No one would be homeless. There'd be no, there'd be no wars. There'd be nothing like that. We would all realize how we are all connected to the body of God and how we are all connected to each other as well. So I believe that the ultimate power is really that all of us become empowered. All of us become connected so that we can all act in the highest and best, not only for ourselves, but also for each other as well. Okay, so there's 
there's all kinds of different methods and there's all kinds of different variations on this. Um, there, there's even a, a quantum one that, that you can use if you feel more comfortable with that. I mean, I can I can make a five hour video on, on how to meditate and go into theta state and all this, but that's not the purpose of this. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely feel free to ask. And also, um, if, if there's a method that you use that you wouldn't mind sharing, you know, leave it in the comments as well. Um, the more that we can all gain perspective from each other, the more that we can all see the greater perspective. So, you know, comment and, and share away. I, I look forward to hearing what, what all of you have to say. Okay, so that's about all for today. I hope that you got something from this, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, thanks again. Much love and blessings. I love you all. And now we shall close with the chant of Obleron. Aum Dei Sote Aum Dei Obleron Aum Dei Sote Aum Dei Obleron Thank you for joining us on today's episode. If you resonate with what you are seeing or hearing, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and share Obleron's content. It really helps him to spread the word and to grow his channel and pages. Collective readings are posted Mondays on the High Priestess's Circle. Teachings are posted Wednesdays on the Magister's Sanctum, and the music from those episodes are posted Fridays on the Empress's Theater. Posters and merch related to Obleron's teachings are available at obleron.square.site. Music from the episodes is also available at obleron.bandcamp.com. Obleron is spelled O-B-L-Y-R-O-N. Lastly, don't forget to connect with the community on Discord. It's called the Magister's Council, and look for the invite link in the description boxes and profiles below. There are astrology and wellness bots, as well as games and discussion forums available for free. There is also an exclusive members-only section with additional content and live streams for subscribers. Obleron also takes inquiries for services through Discord. In case you missed anything, all the links are available in the description boxes and profiles below. Thank you everyone, and much love to all.